good afternoon all am i audible to everyone please write in the chat box if uh, yes if you can see my screen and if i'm audible okay so uh, today we will be doing two chapters from the dietetics textbook tuesdays are for dietetics class and mondays are for nutrition science class so uh, today's our topic will be the first chapter in dietetics that is menu planning uh, if you guys ha have received the book uh, you can go along with this presentation if you have not received the book uh, don't worry when you receive the book these classes will be repeated every two months so uh, don't worry of missing the classes so menu planning uh, a brief uh, definition on nutrition okay uh, don't worry you don't have to uh, like mug this up or learn this by heart just understand the meaning of the definitions nutrition is the science of foods the nutrients and other substances therein their action interaction and balance in relationship to health and disease the processes by which the organism ingests digests absorbs transports and utilizes nutrition and disposes of their end products okay so uh, is my voice audible is it clear to everyone okay so there are some words which i have marked in bold you just have to understand the meaning of that nutrition means it's a science of nutrients and other substances and how they act how they interact and how they balance the health and diseases in one's body okay that's it health i guess most of you are familiar with the definition of health which the world health organization has given us so health is a state of complete physical mental and social well being and not merely the absence of any disease or any infirmity so you have the definition of health in the page number 1 in your textbook okay so just be mindful of these definitions don't uh, you don't require, require to mug this up or learn it by heart just understand the meaning of it now we will go to the next topic that is determinants of food choice before that there are certain terminologies those who are interested in learning more you can just read through the terminologies it is quite simple okay uh, if you have any doubts you can consult me on the whatsapp forum here uh, now we will discuss about the determinants of food choice like what factors will determine or like uh, on the basis of like how an individual chooses his or own her food okay so the first determinant is the biological determinant under that we have hunger and satiety and which means that first of all you should have a basic appetite to have food okay the central nervous system is involved in controlling the balance between hunger appetite stimulation and food intake uh, and micro, uh, macronutrients like uh, carbohydrates proteins and fats will generate the satiety signals of, of varying uh, varying strength and the volume of the food and po or portion size is consumed so the uh, the amount of food which you are consuming and these macro uh, nutrients will signal the central nerv nervous system okay the individual is full okay here yeah, no uh, no more hunger pangs or anything like that you, you uh, he's uh, he or she is full uh, they can stop having the food or stop having that particular meal then we have palatability if the food is tasty you would like like to have it more okay so food is uh, so solely not regarded as a source of nourishment just to provide nourishment to your body that's not just the purpose of food it should also satisfy your pleasure and uh, and it should give pleasure while having food okay so that is palatability you should like the food which you are having okay so there is a direct proportional relationship between the food intake and palatability if the uh, when the food is more and more palatable you have it you feel like having it more and more if the food is less palatable bland you do not feel like having it much based on individual preferences obviously next we have economical and physical determinants such as cost and accessibility 
there are various class of people in our society higher income middle income and lower income so the kind of kind and type of food which they choose on uh, to have for it on a daily basis the cost plays a very important part and it is also seen that the a uh, group of people from the lower income families they miss out on a large variety of nutrients and vitamins just to save cost okay so that's a factor to be noted here and accessibility some uh, some kind of foods are not easily accessible like for example seafood seafood is not accessible in the central india or northern parts of india that easily as compared to the coastal area okay so that's the accessibility part education and knowledge studies indicate that the level of education can influence the dietary behavior during adulthood okay uh, and how, from where do you gain this knowledge through mass media uh, through various public fat, uh, platforms even if you buy a food you buy a packet packaged food you buy a uh, you buy a, a processed food you turn the uh, package you can see the ingredients the contents of the food okay so that will also give you an brief knowledge about what uh, what does it consist and they will also provide the details about any allergens some people may be allergic to peanuts so uh, uh, allergy highlight will be uh, allergy highlight will be given in some processed food okay so that's how education and knowledge will play social determinants there are various cultural influences like uh, some restrictions you may have uh, towards certain food exclusion of meat uh or milk in this, like vegetarians will not have meat so these all are things are the cultural inf influences we have social context for example um so the uh, the the thali a south indian thali is different from a north indian thali why because of a social context okay like for example if a north uh, a person who was born and brought up in the northern parts of india they got a transfer to southern parts of india the first factor which they find it very difficult to adjust with would be the food okay so that's the social context uh, values for example now we have a lot of budding vegan cultures coming up okay um, like we uh, It, it's kind of a global phenomenon that is taking over it is uh, like completely avoiding any animal products even dairy or uh, milk products so those are the values associated and sometimes you will you also have uh, some bloggers or some influencers will say that you will uh, avoid using products which are uh, like um, which which condone they condone the cruelty uh, cruelty products and all they condone the uh, they su suggest that the companies which are using recycled plastics in their food packaging and all they, you support them okay so these are the values how uh, values that will shape the determinants of food choice social setting uh, the majority of food is eaten at home in indian uh, in indian scenario the majority of the food what you consume on day to day basis is home cooked food but also you have you go out and have food for example um, the pani puris and all golgappas and pani puris okay that's a uh, that's a different phenomenon in the northern and central india but when you come to the southern part of india you must have some other regional snacks okay and then you have meal patterns for example if somebody if some of you have heard about some fasting techniques like intermittent fasting so th that's a meal pattern within this scheduled hours you you must have uh, all the meals possible and after that you should not have anything and uh, in, if if somebody is diabetic they will have frequent meals okay uh, four to five ma meals distributed throughout their day okay if somebody is working okay working professionals they their meal distribution will be usually uh, three meals per day so meal pattern will also determine the food choice then we have psychological factors like stress there are two things either you will see somebody who is suffering from stress eating when they are stressed they will try to have more food and uh, and the other opposite case is when they are stressed they don't feel like having anything okay they will just go on fasting so psychological factors the first is stress then mood uh, during mood swings also and um, dip, uh, depression mood appears to influence the cravings okay you are having some kind of food cravings and all usually when you see uh, pms uh, premenstrual syndrome okay that is also dependent upon the psychological factor of mood certain you will crave certain foods like something more sweet it depends upon individual preferences okay uh, during the pms time you will crave certain kinds of food because of the mood swings and all 
then you have image image uh, it is usually influenced by the fashion and the movie industry okay preference of a very extremely slim um, stature for women and a muscular body type for men okay so these kind of uh, image personality determinant will come from the psychological factors and it affects their food choices also eating disorders we have briefly touched upon this topic yesterday uh, too too many eating disorders that is anorexia nervosa and bulimia uh, so that is also that also comes under the mental health disorder criteria then we have consumer attitudes beliefs knowledge optimistic bias uh, in consumer or attitudes um, for example earlier there are there were certain uh, types of fats that were considered unhealthy but now recent studies have shown that uh, have shown the superiority of certain kind of oils and fats over others okay for example using unrefined oils over refined oils okay so that uh, that's how consumer attitudes have shaped uh, shifted then we have beliefs uh, and optimistic bias for example uh, a, a mother who is pregnant she even she if she doesn't like having dairy products as much but just for the um, just just because of the motivation of having a healthy baby and just focusing on the um, health of the child she is carrying she may let go of her bias and she will try to consume more dairy products or protein products which she usually doesn't uh, like okay so that's how it will affect and then you have uh, medical conditions certain medical conditions will affect the choice of food uh, i guess most of you must be knowing about that how diabetes will influence the food uh, the diet chart and menu planning how uh, how if you have a hypertensive patient in your a person, a family member how the food will be addressed towards them sometimes you you yourself has to let go of increased intake of salt because just to cater the need of that particular family member okay so that is that is a, these are the different determinants which will shape our food choices then we'll come ac across functional foods uh, functional foods means food has different variety of function a single food may uh, serve for very uh, very much of therapeutic and general functions so we will discuss about different types of fun functions in brief first is the antioxidant function so on a daily basis your body will, um, should be tackling a lot of free radicals as a result of uh, pollution outside and also as a result of the metabolism and the different pathways which is taking place in your body there are certain byproducts and free radicals are usually uh, the most common byproducts of any metabolic uh, pathway so free radicals if they are not uh, removed from the body they are toxic and they may cause to other clinical disorders so uh, uh, how to tackle these free radicals have uh, food which is rich in antioxidant so antioxidants will help to neutralize and counteract the deleterious free radicals but the natural mechanisms may prove to be inadequate especially in poor environments just because you are having antioxidant uh, rich diet doesn't mean that you are cured of all diseases there are various factors which will come in play it is not medicinal but it aids the uh, medical diagnosis then um, under antioxidant effect you have various examples of cereals pulses vegetables etc we will uh, discuss about the antioxidant uh, oxidants present in these in the next slide uh, first we will cover all the functional foods then we have detoxifying effect so in detoxifying effect two phases are involved okay uh, there are a phase a phase one which is given as mfo microsomal mixed function oxidase system it's too technical but to uh, just to uh, simplify it there are two phases in the first phase what happens is uh, the antioxidants or the detoxifying agent will suppress the oxidation okay if if something go undergoes oxidation it acts as a free radical okay it will damage the cell and etc et so what happens is first you have to suppress suppress the oxidation so that is the first phase and in second phase what happens is uh, some enzymes will be re uh, released that will make sure that these toxins are completely out of your body these are the two phases in first phase suppress the oxidation process second phase excrete the toxin from the body 
so that's a detoxifying effect of any given uh, food if uh, if a food has claimed to be uh, well known for having it having a detoxifying effect usually these phase, these two phases will be followed up when you consume it so there is an example given in the textbook that is uh, limonene present in citrus fruit peels etc protects against cancer by inducing uh, various uh, glutathione transferase group phase 2 enzymes these are the en uh, enzymes which will help to take care of the toxin and remove it from the body okay so, so some examples are given just uh, read through that examples then we have a uh, blocking or suppressing effect there are certain foods that will uh, suppress the negative effect of certain toxins and prevent uh, certain clinical disorders such as cancer like um, garlic it is known to have allylic sulfides okay the, it's uh, these are the small nutrient compo components present in garlic and it is known that some studies have been done that these allylic sulfides are potent anti mutagenic and anti carcinogenic agents means they will suppress any dna mutation taking place or they will suppress suppress the cancer causing factors if any if at all, if at all it is present okay so these are the this this is an example of how a food can act as a blocking and suppressing agent to prevent certain uh, diseases then we have anti inflammatory effect so uh, usually um, a chronic inflammation follows after uh, usual uh, after when a person is usually um, obese okay obesity is followed by a, a moderate level of uh, inflammation overall inflammation and then it may turn to chronic inflammation and it can affect certain systems so uh, anti inflammatory effect omega 3 fatty acid is known to have uh, is known to protect the cell membranes from the anti inflammatory effect fish oil supplement uh, in patients who have anti inflammatory diseases such as arthritis inflammatory bowel disorders okay so for them uh, having uh, supplementing them with fish liver oil or cod liver oil which is rich in omega 3 fatty acids have shown improvement then hypocholesteremic effect that is uh, hypocholesteremic means decreases the um cholesterol level okay so garlic is an example here it is shown that garlic reduces the plas plasma um ldl cholesterol and triglyceride uh, crystal rate and yogurt and milk also reduces the cholesterol synthesis that is that is how the hypocholesteremic effect works in certain foods which is given then we have hypoglycemic effect the soluble uh, dietary fiber for example fenugreek seeds also called, called as methi seeds uh, taking uh, fenugreek soaked water or using fenugreek seeds or such spices in your food regularly has shown to reduce the glycemic index uh, in, the, in the in the person who is consuming such things and it is so, so shown as a management not preventive but at least uh, under the management category for type 2 diabetes mellitus then we have antibacterial effect um, probiotics uh, the most common probiotics are lactobacillus and uh, 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 bifidobacteria okay so what these probiotics will do is they will alter, alter the ph gut ph the ph level in the stomach so that if at all while we are ingesting a food and uh, there are some pathogens in that food or some microbes that are harmful for your body uh, while ingesting the such pathogens they are killed uh, killed in the acidic environment of your gut so that's how the probiotics help uh, in immunity then we have the digestive effect uh, for example people who suffer from flatulence that is accumulation of gas in your uh, intestines or gi tract gas related gastroenteritis or gas related problems uh, what you can have like uh, esophyteida that is hing what we call in hindi hing uh, ginger is used it's a very common uh, household herb uh, sorry household uh, root which is used for any stomach related problems ajwain uh, has known to suppress the uh, is known to reduce the stomach pain like anti it is anti spasmodic and uh, it relieves the flatulence Okay, so these are the examples of certain household uh, things which you can use to uh, relieve yourself from some digestive ill effects of food. And you have immunopotentiating effect. 
uh, so certain foods they help in immunity okay uh, for example foods rich in vitamin c or um, again the probiotics like lactobacillus and uh, bifidobacteria okay they have shown to help to boost uh, immunity uh, beetroot juice beet juice etc some again there are certain examples of garlic also given so these are the food items which have claimed to be increasing the immune response in one's body so these are the functional foods uh, like these are the functions of food in various level not just to provide nourish nourishment and nutrient to the body but apart from that how they aid in the overall well being of the body then uh, sources of antioxidants if you go to page number 5 uh, two tables are given okay uh, you can read those two tables somewhat the same thing has been mentioned this image i took from the internet but uh, what you have to refer is given in table 1.1 and table 1.2 dietary antioxidants and sources of nutrient antioxidants you can read through that just understand that you can understand like which kind of uh, antioxidants and who who are their major sources for example if it is vitamin c all the citrus fruits spinach uh, cabbage garlic etc vitamin e vegetable oils legumes beta carotene all the yellow uh, yellow and orange fruits like carrots yellow papaya spinach so you can understand what are the uh, antioxidants different types of antioxidants and what are their major sources from where you can avail this antioxidants please go through these two tables then uh, in short i will be just going through the foods and uh, and their antioxidants it is given in your textbook a brief paragraph for each of this topic is given just read through that here i will just go through the important words which you can uh, underline if you have the textbook with you you can underline this so under the cereal section uh, the antioxidants common antioxidants are ferulic acid caffeic fatty acid selenium pronyl lysine you can underline this if you if you are coming uh, around or you can take a screenshot of the screen if you are using your mobile under pulses that zine and genistein and in exam some questions can come from these areas okay uh, uh, we can just uh, put a name like that zine and genistein under which category do you find these antioxidants you may be given some options like cereals pulses fruits vegetables etc so that's why i have i have mentioned these names along uh, with their sources vegetables and fruits vitamin c beta carotene tocopherols dry fruits and nuts and seeds uh, melatonin and ellagic uh, acid spices carotenoids curcumin eugenol tea and coffee chlorogenic acid flavonoids whey proteins in red wine prontocyanidins in jaggery phenol you can take a screenshot of this particular screen so once uh, when you start reading the textbook you can compare the screen with the contents and you can underline the uh, this important uh, antioxidants and their sources Uh, shall i change the slide uh, now we will come to five food groups uh, there are uh, there is one uh, one heading called five food groups and the other heading called four food groups okay both of these food groups are given by the icmr the indian council of medical research has given both these food groups okay in the four food groups they have just um, added two food uh, two food groups from the cereals and pulses they have made it into one okay that's it that's the only difference so uh, food groups will help uh the nutritionalist and the dietitian in various area we will discuss that later so uh, in page number 14 you can find table 1.5 okay in that you have um, these five food groups and what what are all the contents of each of this section 
okay and what are the main nutrients these food groups will provide to your client okay so under cereals and grain products that is uh, easy rice wheat raj, uh, ragi bajra maize jowar barley rice flakes wheat flour okay and the main nutrients will be uh, it, will, it, it, it will be the major provider of energy protein invisible fat uh, b complex vitamins folic acid iron and fiber under pulses and legumes you get um, moong dal urad dal um, bengal gram uh, red gram lentil or uh, the lentils etc rajma soya bean beans peas and under milk and meat products all the dairy products as well as the chicken um, meat red meat and uh, white meat both fish in fruits and vegetables it will comprise of all the uh, horticulture produce and then we have fats and sugar uh, and uh, in uh, under the indian uh, what are the foods that are usually common commonly found in the indian diet plan is given in the uh, five food groups categories okay so you can go through that so that's quite uh, that's an important uh, criteria on how to advise a client based on while we are making a menu plan for them or while you are giving a diet therapy to them so you have to remember these five food groups and four food groups next we have the four food group plan again given by the icmr food pyramid uh, so the cereals and pulses and legumes are under one category then you have vegetables and fruits animal source fo uh, foods and oil and highly processed foods high in sugar and fat you can see the pyramid uh, it is given in the pyramid uh, displaying uh, form of data because uh, the portion is, uh, you can understand the portion of how much should be consumed within a meal it is more or less similar to the five uh, food groups but the uh, categories are one less than the five food groups that's only difference here then we'll uh, go through the general icmr diet, uh, dietary guidance it is uh, in page number 15 Uh, so just by looking at this, uh, while you are, uh, if you are having a freelance consultation, or you are planning to become a freelance consult uh, consult consultant in uh, dietetics or nutrition, then make sure that you display such uh, pyramids in your office, or if at all you are in a healthcare facility, make sure the uh, it is displayed everywhere. So just by looking at this pyramid, uh, the clients can understand that. they have to exercise regularly and be physically active these are the things which they should avoid abstain from alcohol say not to or tobacco and this will give them the guidance of things which they should eat sparingly moderately eat liberally consume adequately or the carbohydrates and energy and protein rich food should be consumed adequately fruits and vegetables the rich source of fiber can be uh, eat liberally meats dairy products should be you should keep it on a moderate side and highly processed foods fats and sugar eat sparingly okay and along with this chart we have some extra guidelines for example uh, variety should be in, uh, included in the balanced diet so that it is not monotonous and the client or the consumer doesn't get bored out of their daily meal plan Uh, make sure that if you are giving counseling to a pregnant and lactating woman they uh, there is a provision of extra food to ensure pro proper nutrition and health to both the mother and child uh, ex uh promote exclusive uh, breast feeding for at least 6 months nothing else should be given to the child apart from the mother's breast milk for the first 6 months post that uh, it is and uh, it is best to encourage them to continue the breastfeeding at least to the uh, till the next 2 years for as long as they can and as much as possible after 6 months when you do the weaning for the child uh, include home cooked food in the semi solid form and refrain from using too much of uh, or the, uh, too much of being dependent on any lactogen or any serlac products such uh, some brands so refrain from being too much dependent on those uh, food sources and try to incorporate home cooked uh, semi uh, semi solid food for the uh, infants who are being weaned and uh, adequate nutrients for children and adolescents should be taken into consideration plenty of vegetables and fruits should be included avoid over uh, overeating 
exercise regularly, restrict their st uh, the salt intake for everyone in a family to the minimum, ensure that uh, safe and clean foods are used, and uh, drink plenty of water, mini uh, minimize the use of too much of processing of food or using the cooking methods which requires too much of processing, you will lose the nutrients and the nourishment factor of the food. So try to choose the cooking methods like steaming and boiling and sauteing instead of deep frying and all. So choose your uh, appropriate cooking methods that will contain the maximum nutrients at the least amount of nutrients are lost during the cooking process. Any cooking process, there is a certain amount of loss of nutrients, but it depends upon which method you are using in cooking. Then we go to my pyramid. Uh, there are two uh, topics here, my pyramid and my pl uh, plate on page number 16 and 17. Uh, these two are, uh, are given by the uh, United States Department of Agriculture. Okay, it's, uh, it's not an Indian based uh, classifying factors, but it is from your United States, but still it can be put into use in the Indian scenario also. So the My Pyramid plan from the uh, US Department of Agriculture, it was designed in the year 2005. Okay, so uh, just by looking at this one image, uh, you can, even if you don't have the explanatory pam pamphlets or uh, at, at your office, you can explain this image to the client. The first thing is you can see uh, a person who is climbing this pyramid means it, it, uh, it indicates physical activity. Okay, regular physical activity. You can see the black color, it indicates physical activity. Then vary your choices. You can see six bands, one, one orange, green, red, yellow, blue, and violet. These are the six bands. So these bands will indicate the variety of uh, food criteria. Okay, and it will also give an idea about the amount of each of the food criteria that should be consumed. For example, the least thing that should be consumed is this yellow band and yellow band rep represents oil. Okay, the most uh, prominent one is the orange band and that represents the, represents the grains, pulses and cereals, etc. So that is uh, how this my pyramid is explained and portions are considered, okay, uh, not a single band. For example, if you just go for depend on completely depend on grains, grains will not satisfy the entire nutritional requirement for a person. If you completely uh, are dependent on meat and beans, that will also not satisfy the other nutritional requirement. So portions are should be considered. Everything in the in a given proportion and portion should be consumed. And it is customizable according to individual's needs and likes. So that's how we explain the uh, my pyramid to someone. If at all you want to display this in your Indian clinic, etc., you can use it. Then you have my plate. Uh, this campaign was uh, assisted with the help of their then first lady, that is Michelle Obama, and uh, the my plate will indicate the amount of uh, uh, categories which you should come consume. For example, if it is fruits, twenty percent of your plate should consist of fruits. Vegetables, 30% of your uh, plate should consist of vegetables. Protein group should uh, be 20% and grain should be 30%. And then you can have a bowl of dairy of your liking. Okay, So these percentages are given in the textbook. You can just read through it. So that's my plate. These are the two campaigns from uh, which we can learn from the USA Department of Agriculture. Then we have a Mediterranean diet pyramid. So there are a lot of uh, advantages of a Mediterranean diet. So some of them are you, uh, the same, uh, the image which I'm using here for the pyramid, it's the same one which is present in your textbook. So you can uh, refer that. So I will just go through the advantages of this Mediterranean di uh, diet. So it has high amounts of fruits and vegetables. You can see here it is mentioned vegetables in abundance. Fruits two to three times a day is consumed. Uh, beans, grains, also in uh, abundance in most of their uh, meals, they have whole grains. Uh, red wine is also another comp component uh, which is uh, taken in moderation. Olive oil is the primary source of uh, fat which is added. 
and uh, the advantages of the melatonin diet are it lowers the total cholesterol it uh, reduces the risk of any coronary heart diseases uh, it makes sure and uh, it ensures that the uh, blood pressure levels are normal and uh, it has an inverse relationship with weight gain uh, the more you consume the melatonin diet the uh, less chances of uh, obesity so that's the inverse relationship between weight gain and also with blood pressure so that is the advantage of melatonin diet plan uh, the uh, the constituents of this diet are also readily available in india so this can also be an option for your client uh, but it will be uh, you have to check the cost effectiveness also to which cl class of client are you catering to for example people from the lower income society may not be able to afford most of this so if at all you are catering to a high class uh, category of clients they can still have the option of following a mediterranean diet uh, plan in their uh, reg uh, regular menu plan so that's an option which you can provide then we have planning balanced diet there are certain steps involved we will discuss that uh, later first we'll just go through the uh, basic principles here so what is a balanced diet it's uh, a balanced diet should provide around 60 to 70% of the total calories from carbohydrate 10 to 12% from protein 25 to uh, 20 to 20% uh, of total cal calories from fat you can underline that statement in page number 18 okay so the balanced diet usually it will meet all the nutritional requirement of a healthy person okay uh, it provides all the phytochemicals required it will prevent any regenerative degenerative diseases in the future it, uh, in, improves the immunity increases endurance level etc you can see the advantages which is listed down in points just read through that then we have food exchange list. So a food exchange list are basis of uh, meal planning. Uh, we have given a food exchange list in the page number in page number twenty four to twenty five. You can refer that page for uh, during any consultations. It, it's much easier. So food exchange li list means uh, different kinds of food in different uh, portions but they provide more or less the same calories or same amount of nourishment so that's the food exchange list then we have food composition tables so uh, for example uh, the national institute of nutrition has published indian food composition tables so the uh, this has the data which which has all the relevant chemical constituents of a food okay uh, along with the macronutrients it will also give the consistence of the uh, micronutrients like polyphenols oligosaccharides etc saponins etc present in the food so it is very useful in many ways for example for nutritional surveillance of the entire population uh, what is the nutritional labeling which uh, a company if somebody is if a company wants to release a product based on this food composition table they can make their ingredients list etc and uh, understand the disease prevalence based on the type of food which the population is having okay uh, in india most of the population is prone to have a protein deficient diet so how to cater those needs so that's how the food composition tables will help you out then we have principles of planning diet there are few principles which we'll discuss here So uh, the first principle, it should be based on the disease condition of the patient. Um, you can provide a balanced diet, even if the patient has undergo underlining disease condition like diabetes mellitus, hypertension, or any chronic uh, chronic inflammatory diseases, etc. A balanced diet can be provided to them. And that's why it should be based on any underlying disease condition. Otherwise, for a healthy uh, individual, we can follow the five group methods, four group methods, or any other food pyramids which we have discussed earlier. It should meet the nutritional requirement for, uh, first and foremost. Uh, all the recommended daily allowances should be considered while making a diet plan. It must uh, fulfill the family needs. For example, if you are a, 
if you are a family of four okay uh, you uh, your family may consist of kids and adults okay so the nutritional requirement of kids is different from adults adults require food only for the day to day maintenance but kids require nutrients for maintenance as well as for growth if you have a senior citizen in your family the their nutritional needs also should be considered you can't uh, plan the food only based on kids and provide that same food for everyone okay so based on the age and gender uh, differences if you have a pregnant woman in your family okay, catering to her special needs so everyone's family uh, nutritional needs should be fulfilled planning should save time and energy uh, the recipe is what you are providing in a diet plan it should be simple and it should be easy to follow uh, so that labor and time can be saved and also as well as the energy can be saved you, the resources can be saved then we have to take care of the economic consideration uh, which class and category of client you are serving to okay and uh, make sure if you can give them the education of purchasing the fruits and vegetables in bulk uh, so especially uh, buying seasonal fruits and vegetables in bulk and all so nutritional needs are also come, uh, fulfilled and it's cost effective then menu planning should give maximum nutrients um, uh, because when you are cooking 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 will lead to some loss of nutrients that is for sure so make sure the kind of cooking methods which you are using uh, make sure it uh, it it is a kind of kind of one for example boiling or steaming the food as much as possible that will uh, make sure most of the nutrients are saved and not lost uh, due to heat then we have consideration of individual likes and dislikes so preferences each and individual each and every individuals preferences should be taken into consideration while making our diet plan uh, menu planning should provide variety because if the meals become monotonous they are not relished by the family members so variety can be introduced by changing uh, using the food exchange tables uh, changing the color texture taste and the even the method of cooking for example if you take a potato you can there are n number of ways of how you can cook a potato steaming it boiling it uh, sauteing it or deep frying it okay so frequently change the method of cooking the same vegetables so that will uh, add the variety food habits uh, so each household will have their own food habits for example in some household it is very important to have uh, a wheat related food in at the night and break, uh, breakfast morning breakfast and lunch it will be largely based on rice okay that, that will change from the from geographical and regional um, aspects also so that has to be considered then seasonal availability the foods that are seasonal should be included in the diet plan then you have to check the psychological aspect if somebody is suffering from any eating disorders in a in a particular family or somebody is undergoing a stressful condition in a family so such uh, make sure the the diet plan is simple but as well it will it will cover their entire nutritional needs these are the principles of diet plan each of this principle is briefly explained in that uh, in the book which you can go through then uh, we'll discuss the steps included in uh, planning a diet page number 22 recommended dietary allowances we have discussed in yesterday's class uh, so we have to, to calculate a balanced diet we should know what is the rda for each uh, portion of food that has been added so you can for, refer the icmr table again in even in this book they have given the icmr table but it is of 2010 uh, if you are on, an ongoing practitioner please you, you can refer the recent uh, editions of uh, icmr table the rta table otherwise for exam purpose please follow what is given in the textbook then we have food list uh, we can prepare food list by two ways one is using the icmr table and second is using the exchange list so what is the difference between these two in icmr table you will get to know the information of how much what portion should be served in an average serving okay in a sing, in a sim, uh, single meal a meal plan in a single meal for example lunch what would, would should be the servings of each uh, carbohydrates or cereals 
uh, pulses, how much milk should be provided, how much fruits, how much servings of fruits and vegetables should be given. The portion the CMR ta table will give. But what, what variety of things we can use that the food exchange list will give. Okay, so uh, ICMR tables, which gives the knowledge about the portion, portion control, you find the, uh, there are three tables, table 1.8, table 1.9 and table 1.10. Okay, so you can follow these three tables to understand the portion control, which the ICMR has suggested. And if you want to check the food exchange list, follow the table 1.11 for exchange list. Let's uh, uh, the exchange list consists predominantly the Indian food, which is used in the regular household. So that is easier for consultation. So I guess you have understood the difference between these two uh, food list. One is ICMR list that will give the idea of what, what portion should be used, how much portion should be served. And the food exchange list will uh, give you the variety of food which you can serve. So daily you can change your menu. Then finally, you will make the menu. So in making the menu, uh, the foods that are listed in step two using the food exchange list, it will be converted into recipes. Okay, uh, and uh, these recipes will be distributed uh, in the breakfast, lunch, evening tea, dinner, etc. So using the food exchange list, which you have on page number 24 uh, four to 25, uh, select the recipes what you want to make and distribute these recipes. For example, if you're taking um, Ravidli, you're taking uh, Sambar, um, Bonda, Omelette, Cheese or Soup with White Sauce, etc. Okay, these are the favorite recipes which you have selected. Distribute this across the breakfast, lunch, dinner plan. What will go where? Usually the breakfast is given in the first section of the uh, table then you have pulses which will be added more into the lunch area okay and uh, meat also sometimes the lunch and the dinner area other eggs eggs you can exchange in uh, either in the dinner or in the breakfast area so you can select the recipes uh, from this exchange list and distribute it across the three uh, meals how many meals your client must be having maybe they are having just two meals a day three meals a day or if they are a diabetic patient they may have short and frequent meals a day, five to six meals a day. So based on the number of meals which they have throughout the day, distribute the selected recipes. And that's how you make a uh, menu plan. 